Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and as we continue with the Mighty Ducks trilogy, I'm going to be reviewing the third and final installment of the series called D Free the Mighty Ducks. It stars Emilio Estevez, Jeffrey Nolan, David Selsby, Heidi Kling, Joshua Jackson, Josh Acklin, Elton Henson, Sean Weiss, Keaton Thompson, Vincent LaRusso, Matt Dorfee, Jared Relief Henson, and Mike Biotar. It's written once again by Stephen Brill, who continued with the series along with Heavyweights. Also co-writing the film is Kenneth Johnson, who was the writer and director of the TV miniseries V, as well as working on movies like Short Circuit 2 and the Shaquille O'Neal film Steel and it's directed by Robert Lieberman who went on to direct the film Fire in the Sky. The movie begins when the Ducks are being awarded with a junior varsity hockey scholarship to Eden Hall Academy, a prestigious prep school that coach Golden Bombay played by Emilio Estevez had attended. But Bombay has announced that he will be leaving his position as coach to take the job with the Junior Goodwill Games. But much to Charlie's dismay, Bombay is being filled by former Minnesota North Stars player Ted O'Ryan, who is played by Jeffrey Nolan. And since then, the Ducks have been clashed with O'Ryan's disciplinary coach tactics and his focus on defense over scoring. Orion, however, had abandoned several Duck traditions and decided to strip Charlie Conway's Captain C, stating that the tricks and tactics the team has been using in the PV leagues won't work at this level. He was proven white right when, in the first game of the season, the Ducks had took an embarrassing tie after losing a nine-goal lead. Orion was livid but makes a valuable point about hockey and life when he states that the Ducks won't be able to dominate every game and has to learn how to play two-way hockey. Not choking when the game isn't going in their way, Charlie's only consideration was to meet Linda, a young student petitioning to change the school's team name, the Warriors, as it perpetrates an offensive Native American stereotype. She did initially write him off as a mindless job. The two started to hit it off. But as the team's difficulty had occurred, Charlie decided to leave the team along with Filton as he follows. So they went on to skip school and, and went on to the mall in, of America to have fun. Meanwhile, Charlie had met um, Bombay's old colleague, Hans, played by Josh Acklin, who you last saw him in the first movie. Charlie was talking about his problems over there at the academy, which his mother wouldn't listen about that. So he thought Hans would be a good choice between all of this. And Hans was talking about all of the hockey elements that was going on before he passed away. Therefore, Bombay had returned for Hans' funeral, and the next day, Bombay came back to show Charlie the ropes on how did he first join in, in in the academy and how he finally looked up to coach Ted O'Ryan to see that he has a daughter who's actually skating with and since everything was going wrong as it turned out you know, Charlie decided to rejoin the team again and apologize to Ted O'Ryan for all of this but to teach him how to learn how to do two-way hockey so then now they finally team up once again with the Warriors to earn the biggest team that they'll ever have for the Ducks. And that's what lead to the biggest problem in the third installment because while this is indeed the final movie that they ever had, I mean I love the opening of the film which they focus on all the uh, stock footages from the first two films which was really cool. It was just kind of sad to say that this, this movie had a lot of problems with the way the story was going as they started to change every single moment of what the first two films were about. It's like 
they're starting to lose ground by the time this film was going. The writing was like really starting to go a little off too. Yeah, and this is coming from the same writer that, that wrote the TV series V. You know, the miniseries of course. The original 80's one. And that's where it started to go really downhill from there. I didn't like Coach Ted Orion in this movie. I mean, yes, he did have a change of pace as far as the film was going. And I think he was just one of the biggest jerks of all time. I think I'd rather take uh, Gordon Bombay any day, in my opinion. It was a dumb move from that part. And it's kind of a shame that Emilio Estevez doesn't get enough screen time in this movie. You know, prior to the fact that he played that role. You know, this is another example of, of money issues going on. And so that was a shame too. It was great to see the original cast from the second film as opposed to half of the cast from the first two. But this is where everything started to go wrong. Brandon Crudden Adams, of course, who was in the original first two films, you know, he was also in, in The Sandlot, as I forgot to mention in the other two reviews. I, I found out that he actually got arrested during that time so that he didn't uh, appear in, in this sequel at all. I was also wondering about some of the other actors who may have appeared in this one as well that may have been missing, so I don't know. That, that's what I thought too when I saw this movie. Well, it did have a lot of great moments in the film. There was a lot of funny moments, especially the scene where where he started to use horse poop as brownies, so that was pretty funny. On those jocks at the academy, I thought that was hilarious. And then there was the Mission Impossible takeoff, where they actually took the ant farm and uh, put it on <laughs> over the uh, the academy's team. <laughs> oh wow, that was hilarious too. And of course, you saw the scene uh, where they froze all the the team suits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything was all frozen solid. And then there's a sign that says. Varsity sucks ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like to mention those scenes because they're, they're just hilarious for the most part. But I do agree, the movie was not nearly as good as the first two films, and that was the problem. It's too many flaws all the way around. Not enough as the film was going. It had a great soundtrack though, just like the first two films have. <sighs> and of course, the the final scene with. Uh, but Goldberg, uh, <laughs> oh my god, Goldberg has, <laughs> since he's always been the goalie in the film, he, he wants to be, he wants to taking the last shot. <laughs> it's just hilarious. You know, I know, it's, it, it's so ridiculous, but you get the idea. But other than that, though, I, I think it worked pretty well to the fact that this was going to be the final installment because it doesn't look like they were going to make a fourth sequel to this and I know they weren't because already you know the My Ducks had moved on they already had made a TV series an animated series by the way that later had a TV movie based on that so that was pretty good but it was a lot different from the, the movies themselves so that's an interesting part but it, it was great. It's a decent sequel, but it's not as good as the first two. I'll give you that. So anyway, I give D3 The Mighty Ducks two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.